15 to 10 the Giants over the Cowboys number 88 Mike Sherrard the Miller Lite player of the game he's got a good number final score here at Giants Stadium the Giants 15 the Cowboys 10 coming up it's the Nasdaq stock market post game report JB and Terry will get you up to date on all of today's NFL action with scores and highlights from around the NFL that's all next on the Nasdaq stock market post game report. created their microprocessor in 1971, and the faster their chips have performed, the faster their company has grown. Today, the Intel design is the brains behind two-thirds of the world's PCs. By the 21st century, Intel expects their chips to execute two billion instructions in one second. Where do you find such fast-thinking companies? Actually, there's a list of them printed every day. NASDAQ, the stock market for the next hundred years. Prices are low at Subway, but I'd rather focus on sandwiches. People call them hoagies or heroes or submarines, because they're shaped like submarines. But we call them Subway sandwiches. Our six-inch meatball sub features meatballs and sauce on bread I just baked, all for a low economical price. I won't say how low, but you'll probably find enough in the cushions of your couch. <laughs> for nearly 30 years, Subway has made some of the best sandwiches anywhere, like the six-inch meatball sub, only $1.69 at Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. If you were to design the most exciting place on Earth, it probably wouldn't look like this. It would have riding, and boating, and fun for the whole family. It would have nightlife, and big-name entertainment, and a world-class casino. So it's not surprising that a place that looks like this doesn't offer all these things. What's surprising? is that it does. Boxwoods, the wonder of the Connecticut woods. Monday on Good Day New York, how to keep your rubber band man from bouncing back and forth, and the inside dirt on the Giants' Dallas showdown. Good Day starts at 5.55 on Fox 5. And welcome to the NASDAQ Stock Market Post Game Report here in Hollywood, along with Jimmy Johnson, Terry Bradshaw, I'm James Brown, and we'll bring you up to date on some scores from around the NFL. You see the score there. Dallas Cowboys losing to the Giants. Yes, indeed, 15-10 the final there. So the Cowboys did not look inspired playing that game. The Giants tried to help their own calls going into the postseason play, but it will not happen as we move to the next score because Green Bay right now is winning handily over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by the score of 34 to 12. That one in the fourth quarter of play. In Atlanta, Arizona needed a victory in order to stay in contention. This one is late in the fourth quarter. Arizona is losing by four to the Falcons. We heard Terry Bradshaw talk about the Falcons going deep. It worked well, and right now that accounts for the margin in that ball game. In Cincinnati, 
Bobby Brister was at the helm for the Philadelphia Eagles. Late in the fourth quarter, the Bengals are making a comeback, with the Eagles nursing a one-touchdown lead in that ball game. In Chicago, the Patriots and Bears are fighting. That has been the score since the first half. Still nursing a three-point lead are the Patriots in the fourth quarter play at Soldier Field. In Cleveland, the Browns are really romping nicely as they head in the postseason play. 35 to 3 over the Seahawks. That one as well in the fourth quarter play. And in Indianapolis, the Colts, I guess, looking for just a little bit of confidence as they head to next season, holding to a one point lead over the Buffalo Bills. The score there is 10 to 9. And as I turn to my colleagues, we first have to talk about the Dallas game. We mentioned during the pregame show, Terry, again, that as a player, you can't turn the emotion on and off. You've got to play steady. Dallas did not come in fired up at all. Dallas, you know, I think one of the things that I was kind of surprised about, Jimmy, was if Troy Aikman doesn't play, Michael Irvin said, I'm not going to play. And, you know, I wouldn't, if I'm, if I'm a quarterback, you know, I'm thinking to myself, if I can't play for injury or whatever the reason the coach pulls me out, then that does, I, I really don't want players around me that say, well, if you're not going to, first unit's not going to play, then I'm not going to play. I think there's some problems there. I think it's the, I, I, I believe this football team is tired. This football team is not playing well offensively. They don't look sharp. They don't act sharp. And, I, and quite honestly, Jimmy, they don't seem to be excited about playing the game of football. Well, you know, I, I think it has been a grind for them. And I think the biggest thing now, though, you look at this football team, you know, make no mistake about it, they are an extremely talented football team. You know, they can go out there and beat anybody in the league. But the only thing is, they're not as good a football team today as what they were at the first of the season. I think the first half of the season, hey, they're as good as anybody in the league. But after San Francisco beat them, they have steadily gone down. And it's just like they, they're playing just well enough to win most games. But now, without some of their key players in there, they're not winning those games. Yeah, you know, last year they had injuries to their defense, but they kept on winning. They, you know, the great effort by Emmett Smith in this giant game last year. This year, you look at it, it's the offensive side that's beat up. We look at Troy Aikman, one touchdown pass and seven interceptions since week nine of the season. And it's hard to believe that the, with this much talent and with the, the goals out there that they have to set for themselves, winning a third Super Bowl, which is very difficult to do, believe me, I know. I, I find it hard to believe that this offensive can't get it going. But right now, they, their confidence has to be low, and they can't, you know, a week's break's not going to help their confidence. I reflect well, they're going to have two weeks to get ready for that game at home. I reflect back on the comments you made earlier in the season, Jimmy. Uh, Terry and I were a little surprised that you said if you were still in Dallas, you wouldn't change your coaching style at all. You would still be a taskmaster. We thought that maybe Barry Switzer's lighter style no. might be appropriate. Still remains to be seen as a head in the postseason play. Okay, the New York Giants certainly did look awfully impressive again with that 15 to 10 victory over the uh, Cowboys, helping their cause, but again, they're not gonna make it. Right now, let's take it back out to the Meadowlands. Pat Summerall and John Madden are standing by. And that's the, the final score, 15-10, the Giants win, but they, they really dominated the clock and the football game in the second half, John. Yeah, you know, they, they did what they had to do. They knew that if they were going to make the playoffs, they had to win today, and then they also needed some help from Tampa Bay, and, and they didn't get the help from Tampa Bay, it doesn't look like, but that's all you can do is do what you have to do, and I think the Giants all feel very proud of themselves. Well, indeed they should. After losing seven straight, they came back and won six in a row. They had a chance to make the playoff. We picked the player of the game earlier today. That was Mike Sherrard, the wide receiver. And Mike, congratulations, first of all, on being named the player of the game. Oh, thanks a lot, guys. What's the mood of uh, the Giants in the locker room now? A disappointment, I'm sure, because you won't be in the playoffs, it doesn't appear, but a successful ending. Oh, definitely so. I think we're uh, pretty upbeat in the locker room. We're happy to uh, get that seven-game losing skid behind us and finish off the season strong. We knew coming in that we could control the Tampa Bay, Green Bay, uh, outcome and we just played hard and uh, you have to give a lot of credit to the guys in the locker room that they never gave up they played hard each week and we finish off on a positive note and hey Mike how about that touchdown you scored today how about the beginning of it the middle of it and the end of it well that's a play that uh, you know we like to run it's a play where I come across the middle and uh, it's a play I'm gonna get the ball most of the time around three four or five yards down the field and we caught him in the right defense I don't know what it was I don't know if it was man coverage and my guy got picked off but when I caught the ball, I expected to get hit. No one was out there. All I could see was uh, Dave Maggett with the defensive back that he was blocking. And then I just made a move inside and uh, ran towards the end zone. Yeah, and then we showed you going up the stairs and handing the ball to a fan. 
Well, it's the Christmas season. You know, I want to give give back to the fans. You know, they were out here for us, and uh, the weather wasn't great, but, you know, I wanted to give the ball to somebody. Did you know the person you gave the ball to? It was a random ball <laughs> given away to. <laughs> he had a, he had an armload of food in his other hand, but <laughs> he didn't care about that. What uh, what, is, what is your thought about where the Giant team is now? I know it's early to be saying, what about next year, but you think the nucleus is there for a contender next year? Well, I think so. I think uh, at the beginning of the year, I thought we'd have a good team. I thought we'd have a playoff team. Looks like we've fallen short of that, but we have a, a great bunch of guys in the locker room, a lot of talent, and the second half of the season, I think we really showed what we can do, and you also have to consider that we have a quarterback that started for the first time, and Dave learned a lot throughout the season, played great in the second half, and uh, you know he's just going to keep getting better, and that's going to lead us uh, hopefully to the playoffs next season. Well, Mike, thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, and uh, tell my family, Chico, hi. <laughs> you did it. We'll send you back now to James Brown in Hollywood. All right, Pat, thank you very much. And, uh, of course, the New York Giants do have something to build on. And when we come back, Terry, Jimmy, and I will talk about that a bit more, as well as update you on another football game that has playoff implications and bring you some more highlights from around the National Football League. That's when the NASDAQ stock market postgame report continues from here in Hollywood after this. Before he was vice president of the United States, he revolutionized farming. Through genetics, his company developed a breakthrough with hybrid corn seed, and yield has been rising ever since. Today, Pioneer Hybrid is the world leader, and its seeds are growing food where food has never been grown. Where do you find companies sowing the seeds of growth for generations to come? Actually, there's a list of them printed every day. NASDAQ, the stock market for the next hundred years. Time out! It's a 16th annual Toyotathon featuring the best all-star lineup of new Toyotas ever and great savings like the 4x2 DX Extra Cab. Save over $1,700 on features you want. And the old Pro Toyota 4x4 has factory to dealer incentives. Want a 4Runner? Get big savings with an extra value package. But to make the catch of the year, come into your Toyota dealer now. New year, new trucks, great Toyotathon deals. I am not what I wear. I'm not a pair of pants or a shirt. I'm not in touch with my inner child. I don't read poetry, and I'm not politically correct. I'm just a guy, and I don't have time to think about what I wear because I've got a lot of important guy things to do. 100% cotton wrinkle-free pants that don't require a lot of thought. Hager, stuff you can wear. I'm John Walsh. Tonight, our holiday gift to you reports on eight captures. A mob informant, Kenny the Rat. He turned in some of the biggest names in the business, then turned on the cops. And no ID, just a blurry surveillance tape and a mother's broken heart. Your tips help catch her son's killer. Plus, this fugitive told a friend he was going to be one of America's most wanted. So the friend told police. Now this alleged murder is in custody. I'll see you tonight, right after cops. Shots fired, an officer down, and that's just the beginning. You're riding shotgun with the LAPD. Primetime Cops, tonight at 8, 7 Central. And welcome back as we continue the NASDAQ postgame report here in Hollywood, California. Some other scores to bring you up to date on. In Chicago, New England is leading 13-3. That is now a final. So the Patriots come out victorious over the Bears. Bears are still very much in it. New England is now in the playoffs in the postseason. In Cincinnati, late in the fourth quarter in that ball game, and the Eagles are now leading by only three. The Bengals have really staged a nice comeback. 30 to 27 there. Nonetheless, Bubby Brister has been looking very good throughout the day. And let me turn to my colleagues again in the New England-Chicago game. That 6-3 score has stayed there for the longest time. Really a good defensive battle between the clubs, Jimmy. Well, you know, Butler had a chance to tie it up two different times. He had the field goal blocked uh, earlier, and then he had missed a field goal. And, and, you know, Chicago just didn't have enough offense to go out there and take charge of that ball game. New England played extremely well defensively, and, and they were able to get the ball in position to score just enough to beat Chicago. Chicago can't get into a, a situation where they've got to score a lot of points. They just don't have enough yeah. offense. Yeah, you're right, Jimmy. They can't afford to get behind. Right. I know when you talk to, to Dave Wonstead, head coach, one of the things is we can, if we play even, if we get the breaks against these really good football teams, then we got a chance to win the football game. And, you know, I think probably the Bears are going to be disappointed if they make the playoffs or if they don't. 
they're going to look back at this New England game because they wanted the Rams. They had the Rams and New England the last two games of the season at home, and they felt that they would win both of these football games. But today, if you look at that, they, win, they beat the Rams, and then today, of course, they lose to the Patriots. And again, important to underscore that with the Green Bay victory apparently taking place there, that all four teams in the Central are in the playoffs indeed. Anything positive to be taken out of this in terms of uh, Chicago limiting a team that likes to pass, like New England, what, 35 plus in the last several games, a big plus defensively? Well, they play the same scheme of defense against New England that they played against Miami and Marino earlier on in the year, and that's how they beat Miami. You know, they play really good pass defense. They don't have a great pass rush, but they have good solid defensive backs and so they were able to play well there the only thing is they have to get some more offense they've made tremendous improvement from a year ago but still they need some more offensive firepower okay we talked a little bit again about that Dallas New York Giants game just a few moments ago the Giants came away victorious but unfortunately will not be in the postseason dance Emmett Smith did not start for the Cowboys today Troy did. Eric Howard knocks him down, as we said earlier on the halftime show. Nine plays. Aikman finds himself on his back five times. Cross the middle, Sherrod. Crossing route, Robert Jones, middle linebacker, matched up man for man. A mismatch, man coverage, nobody there to support it. And there you see the touchdown reception. Rodney Pete in there now. Yes, indeed. Same knocked, fate. Yeah, knocked down. Did he get it? Was he inbounds? And when we saw the replay from the end zone, it appeared that the Giants did recover for a touchdown. Looked pretty good, uh, but they said, in fact, he wasn't, so they gave him credit for the safety. The Giants win it by the score of 15-10, to 10, but the Giants are eliminated from postseason play. In Tampa Bay, Green Bay had been mastering the Bucks, continuing to do so right now with a 34-12 to 12 lead down in Tampa Bay. Sam White's trying to get his squad psyched up. They had won four straight coming into this one. He had, but he ran into a red-hot Sterling Sharp, Brett Favre. Touchdown reception, 16th on the year for Sharp. Here's the 22-yarder, 17th on the year for Sharp. 32 touchdown passes by Favre. And this is 33, which breaks the Packers' record. Held by Lynn Dickey as he finds Sharp once again, who also has his 18th, incredibly, 18th touchdown reception on the year. And we can't underscore it enough as far as Brett Favre <laughs> Not is gonna concerned. going to say it again. <laughs> that Brett Favre should be a Pro Bowl selection. And we'll be back with more from here in Hollywood after this and Terry will say it again <laughs> can you hear it it's the 16th annual Toyota Thon. Time to celebrate the best all-star lineup of new Toyotas ever. Like the new flagship, Avalon. Starting at only $22,758. Or the new Toyota T100 Extra Cab. Big room, big power. Check out the old new Tercel. Starting under $10,000. And here comes the redesigned Celica Convertible. So hurry to your Toyota dealer now during the 16th annual Toyota Thon. New year, new cars, great deals. They created a personal computer, and the world has been moving at a different speed ever since. They put them into classrooms and created the first generation of computer literate children. Then they gave computer users the freedom to work anywhere. And now they're ready to take us into the future with the most powerful personal computer Apple has ever made. Where do you find companies that refuse to stop at success? Actually, there's a list of them printed every day. NASDAQ, the stock market for the next hundred years. Looking for a different way to spice up dinner? Take a new look at cheese. Think of cheese as a zesty way to perk up your chicken. Or cheese as a tangy topping for tastier fries. Awesome! Give American food a new attitude with cheese. First came the Tracy Ullman Show, then in living color. Now comes the most outrageous sketch comedy of all. You've got friends at illegal alien makers. Join award-winning comedian John Lake Wazamo. How do I do it? In House of Buggin', coming to Fox Sunday night this January. Catch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Tuesday at 8, 7 central. back here in Hollywood for the NASDAQ Post Game Report. We want to update you on the Green Bay-Tampa Bay game. There is 116 remaining in that ball game, and Green Bay is leading 
34 to 19. The Packers are in fact in the playoffs. As I mentioned, all four NFC Central teams are in, so they are just trying to go into the postseason with a little bit of momentum there. Right now, we're going to take you out there to give a little bit of a taste of that ball game in just a second. But Terry, again, Brett Favre. I know you don't want to talk about him again. <laughs> he likes good weather and bad weather yeah, play. Yeah, I'm just going to say this about Brett Favre and Green Bay's offense, Jimmy. Going into the playoffs now, the most exciting teams out there are the 49ers and Green Bay offensively. All right, let's take you out as I mentioned to give you a little taste of the action. Take place down in Tampa Bay and we will join our announcers Kenny Albert and Ron Pitts to this franchise and we don't know what's going to happen to Sam Weiss but if the team shouldn't move be sold and shouldn't move I think it'd be a big mistake to not keep Sam Weiss as a part of it the guy has shown improvement on this team working with a bunch of young kids like we said most of the people on this team are second and third year players a lot of adversity. I think he's done a great job and is just starting to, to come to form. And we welcome those of you who have just joined us here in Tampa. Kenny Albert with Ron Pitts, where the Green Bay Packers, as Mark Shimura, is able to handle the onside kick. The Packers, with a minute 14 to go, leading the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 34 19. Green Bay went ahead 14 0 in the first quarter on a 39 yard touchdown run by Edgar Bennett. And the first of three touchdown strikes from Brett Favre to Sterling Sharp. What a day for both Favre and Sharp. Favre 24 of 35, 291 yards. Sharp nine receptions, including three touchdowns. Edgar Bennett, 100 yards on the ground. Favre down to one knee. The Green Bay Packers are headed to the playoffs for the second consecutive year. And there is Sterling Sharp. Well, he won't have to take a shower now. Packers will finish nine up and seven down. This is their third consecutive victory. While the Buccaneers' four-game win streak will come to an end before their first sellout crowd in five years, 74,000. See, they always set you up for the dump. You know, McMichael, I'm sure he never talks to Holmgren. <laughs> He's the first guy off the field. Woo. And he's got on that waterproof jacket, so. Well, they wouldn't have been easy on Mike. They started dumping it on the shoulder, and then they went yeah, to the head. Yeah, yeah. All Why right, not? we see a happy Mike Holmgren there, and he does, in fact, have reason to be happy with just a few seconds remaining, exactly 17 left as the Packers are leading to 34-19. Jimmy, I go back to a conversation we had earlier in the season. Jackie Harris, a tight end with the Packers last year, goes to Tampa Bay. Many folks thought that maybe the offense would fold in Green Bay. It didn't. Well, I tell you, J.B., the guy that's picked up the slack is Edgar Bennett. He is probably the best draw and screen runner in the National Football League. He has picked up the running slack, had 100 yards today, and he makes big plays week in and week out on the screen pass. So I think he's picked up a little bit of the slack of losing Jackie Harris. Yeah, and their defense has picked it up. Jim, you know, the offense struggled early. The defense was carrying it. It was like the number one or number two ranked defense in the NFL, Green Bay. Their offense goes, their offense is kind of in the tank. They're th turning the ball over a lot. Now, now we see in the second half the offense has picked it up averaging over 30 points a game the last five games and now their defense with that 40 big th they're playing well that's why they may make an impact in the playoffs because they can play all phases all right we're going to take our fans and give them a little extra treat as we take them out to uh, Atlanta where Arizona is playing the Falcons and there are about four seconds remaining there let's join Dick Stockton and Matt Millen Clark you know the thing is you got guys yelling, and there's always linemen, like, walking around. Like, like it's, it's Why never are they happened walking before. around? Yeah. I never got that. Well, the Green Bay Packers have defeated the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 34-19. to The Bears lost to New England, but the Bears got into the playoffs. The Detroit Lions are in the playoffs as well. And it appears that the NFC Central will have four teams in the playoffs, which begin next week. And, in fact, the Lions can win the division title if the Vikings lose Monday night. First and goal at the one with three seconds to go and no timeout. And here is Ronald Bowen. He That's doesn't make it and the game is over. Clay Matthews among others. The Atlanta Falcons have held, and time has run out on the Arizona Cardinals, and 
the Falcons hold on and win 10-6. All right, boy, what a finish to that ball game. The Falcons hold on for a four-point victory in the last three seconds. Great defensive stop. Falcons win it 10-6. to six. What a defensive well, stop. Now, now we wonder if Buddy's going to say June Jones is a good football coach because uh -huh. as he said before this game, he was trying to be a football coach. Yeah, this, you know what's going to be interesting now? This offense, a great 42-yard reception by Gary Clark to set this ball up and give the Cardinals an opportunity to win this football game, even though they're out of the playoffs. Buddy has a horse called Fired for Winning, and she won her last race by 18 lengths, and I'm not... I wouldn't be too surprised now with this offense uh, that we wouldn't mind seeing a little firing of some offensive coaches and possi possibly some players because this Cardinal defense, Jimmy and JB, is good enough to be a, get into the playoffs uh, and get that offense going. Who knows what could happen? Well, yeah, you know, without question. And, you know, Howie talked about it in our pregame show. You know, for them to play as well as they did defensively, you know, all year long with an offense really that had a tough time scoring a touchdown in any ball game, you know, that says something because normally when you have a defense playing that well and offense really struggling, eventually the defense starts struggling. But that, that defense played steady all year long. A little bit of a subtext to this ball game. Terry talked about it during a pregame show. Buddy Ryan speaks disparagingly about June Jones. Who does June Jones call to get advice? From? Kevin Gilbride, former offensive coordinator of the Houston Oilers. We all know about the punch thrown by Buddy. And, of course, you know, if Howie was there, Howie would say, you know, poetic justice. I can't wait to let him know poetic justice did not take place today. He loses to a run-and-shoot well, team. Why would Kevin Gilbride give him a June Jones advice for against Buddy? <laughs> uh, I oh, can't figure out a reason for that one at all. Guess what? We'll come back and talk a little more football and some subtext, political implications and all, in just a bit. <laughs> Before he was vice president of the United States, he revolutionized farming. Through genetics, his company developed a breakthrough with hybrid corn seed, and yield has been rising ever since. Today, Pioneer Hybrid is the world leader, and its seeds are growing food where food has never been grown. Where do you find companies sowing the seeds of growth for generations to come? Actually, there's a list of them printed every day. NASDAQ, the stock market for the next hundred years. Time out! It's the 16th annual Toyotathon, featuring the best all-star lineup of new Toyotas ever, and great savings, like the 4x2 DX Extra Cab. Save over $1,700 on features you want. And the all-pro Toyota 4x4 has factory to dealer incentives. Want a 4Runner? Get big savings with an extra value package. But to make the catch of the year, come into your Toyota dealer now. New year, new trucks, great Toyotathon deals. I am not what I wear. I'm not a pair of pants or a shirt. I'm not in touch with my inner child. I don't read poetry, and I'm not politically correct. I'm just a guy, and I don't have time to think about what I wear, because I've got a lot of important guy things to do. 100% cotton wrinkle-free pants that don't require a lot of thought. Hager, stuff you can wear. I'm John Walsh. Tonight, our holiday gift to you. Reports on eight captured. A mob informant, Kenny the Rat. He turned in some of the biggest names in the business, then turned on the cops. And no ID, just a blurry surveillance tape and a mother's broken heart. Your tips help catch her son's killer. Plus, this fugitive told a friend he was going to be one of America's most wanted. So the friend told police. Now this alleged murder is in custody. I'll see you tonight, right after cops. Shots fired, an officer down, and that's just the beginning. You're riding shotgun with the LAPD. Primetime Cops, tonight at 8, 7 Central. All right, back here in Hollywood as we continue the NASDAQ postgame report here from Hollywood, California. Jimmy Johnson, Terry Bradshaw, and James Brown. And let's bring the folks up to date on the playoff picture in both conferences, starting first with the NFC. And, of course, we already know who's in. Well, San Francisco and Dallas, of course. And today with the victory by Green Bay, all four NFC Central teams are in the playoffs. That's the first time in NFC, make that NFL history, that that has occurred. Okay, let's swing you over to the AFC side of the house and take a look at the picture there. We all know Pittsburgh and San Diego absolutely in there. 
Cleveland most impressively today over the Seattle Seahawks. New England with its victory over Chicago is in. The Miami Dolphins are in, so that leaves one playoff spot available over on the AFC side of the house. And again, as we talk about the AFC side, gosh, New England, Bill Parcells, you talked about them starting slow. Bill Parcells, a noted ground guy, had to go to the passing attack and went successfully with it. Well, and the other thing about Bill Parcells, he's a defensive guy, and that's what really won that game for the New England Patriots today was the defense against Chicago. And that defense has really started to play well this second half of the season. They struggled early in the year, especially with their secondary, but they really played well the second half of the year. You know, I had some fun last year talking about New England and Bill Parcells' first year there. I, I said, well, you know, here's a team that'll lose early, like you said, Jimmy. This was last year, but at the end of the season, they're going to hurt some people desperately needing a victory, victory over New England to make the playoffs. Well, New England went on to win five, their last five football games, and that should have been an indicator to all of us that they indeed are a much improved team. Parcells a guy that can change, though. He can change and go to the passive if his personnel dictates it. And change he had to do, because who would have thunk it that with Marion Butts' early season that New England would not have had the ground game, but in fact, they went to the air attack because it wasn't strong. All right, we're going to take you back out to, uh, to Tampa Bay, and we will rejoin our announcer. Kenny Albert and Ron Pitts with some post-game interviews. Gentlemen. Well, JB, the Green Bay Packers knew that if they won today's game here in Tampa, they would qualify for the playoffs for the second straight year. They came out, scored early and often in the first half, Ron. Yeah, and the thing they did, forget all that talk about spreading the ball around. When you got to have the win, get the ball to your money, man. They did that. They got the ball to Sterling Sharp. Well, Brett Favre and Sterling Sharp combined on three touchdown passes in the first half. We chatted with Sterling a couple of moments ago, and we asked him if he and Brett Favre felt like they were in a zone today. No, I just think they came out and tried to put some pressure on Brett and left me one-on-one -on -one out there, and, uh, and Brett was able to have time to throw the ball, and we were able to take advantage of him early. And, uh, you know, in the second half, they kind of changed a little bit, and they, uh, their game plan changed, and, you know, uh, things didn't work out that well in the second half, but we were happy we got ahead, and our defense came in and, and took over the game, and that's all we can ask for. How are you feeling, Sterling? You got another hit, look like a, maybe another stinger. Are you okay? Well, I didn't really get a stinger. I kind of, you know, it, it was just... It was kind of a funny feeling in my left arm and I really, I mean, in my right arm, and I really didn't want to get up and try to get up and, and uh, maybe make it worse than it really was. Right. So I just kind of just uh, laid down there for a while, you know, got some air time, and uh, I'm all right. <laughs> I certainly did. Uh, second quarter, a pair of touchdown receptions. Uh, we're going to take a look at those right now. If you can go back, uh, the first one we're taking a look at, the 22-yarder. Your second touchdown of the game, which tied the Packer record. Well, I mean, they blitzed on the on the play and left me one-on-one -on -one with Thomas Everett. I happened to get to the corner. Brett laid it up there, and it's just a matter of, you know, God allowing you to make the catch. And uh, God has blessed me really all year to, to make plays and to be injured and still be able to make plays. So uh, I know all my credit to him, but, you know, I mean, for bringing me Mike Holmgren in this system so I, I'm able to, to go out and, and show up my athletic ability and what God can really do for me. Sterling, did you feel like you had Martin Mayhew a little bit on a string today? No, I don't think so. I think they put him in some very difficult situations and left him out there one-on-one. -on -one. And I think what they, you know, with them trying to blitz and get to Brett and shake Brett up, I think uh, it just left him out there one-on-one, -on -one and, and we were able to take advantage of it. All right, All right Sterling, congratulations on earning the playoff berth and on the 34-19 victory over the Buccaneers. Good luck in the playoffs. Hey, thank you very much. Hey, Pitsy. Yo, baby. Give me a call. I'll get at you later, all right? I got you. Yep. Have a nice ride. All right, Ron and Sterling, that's... <laughs> A couple of former teammates with the Packers, Ron Pitts, and the hero of today's game, Sterling Sharp. JB, now back to you in the studio. Uh -huh. All right, fellas, thank you very much. And once again, the score there, 34-19. Packers win it. All four teams in the NFC Central are in the playoffs. And keep in mind that if Detroit wins tomorrow night against Miami and if Minnesota knocks off San Francisco on Monday night, those two teams will host first-round games. And, Jimmy, as we turn back to talk to you and Terry about Green Bay, I guess one of the other highlights of their season has been that their defense hit a little bit of a lull in the middle part of the season, but they didn't panic and they came back strong. Yeah, that but, was, I, I was a key one to Jimmy. They, yeah. they, they, their offense struggled early. Their defense was great. Ranked one and one and two most of the first six weeks of the season. And then they fell apart, and now the offense is back. But I think their defense is coming back. Coming back, especially with the, the defensive secondary. You know, Terrell Buckley had some problems with some of the big receivers. They started throwing the alley-oop pass over him, and then, then Fritz Shermer did a good job. He started moving Terrell Buckley around the field, put him over to, to the other side in a couple of ball games, and so the secondary is starting to get better. Now, I think they still need to improve to the point where they were in the early part of the season. If they do that, 
that, they really can make an impact in, the, in uh, the playoffs because you remember against the Cowboys, they were a couple touchdowns ahead of the Cowboys. Yeah, and so they really have a good football team, but they got to shore up the defense just a little bit. Terry, on the offensive side of the ball for the Packers, what have you been impressed with most about Brett Favre and his progress? And I keep in mind what Mike Holmgren said early season, you really jumped on this, that Brett Favre has got to show through this year exactly. that he's the guy to build on for the future. Really, you know, that was talk that maybe they, they if he didn't have a good year, they might get rid of him and go with one of their other quarterbacks. Favre, by his own admittance, was not good at handling the blitz. He couldn't recognize it, and he was too indecisive. Therefore, he had the league-leading 24 interceptions last year. He has turned it around, studied, and now understands. Forget last week, Anthony Morgan. They right. come with a, del a delayed safety blitz, one of the hardest blitzes to read because when you come back, the safety doesn't come r right away. So you can't tell. You take your eyes off of him. Then he comes. He picked him up, hit Anthony Morgan into the corner of the end zone just to back up what he had said. He understands the blitz, and Green Bay, Jimmy, is not turning the ball over. Well, that's because Brett far you know for what he did a year ago to what what he's doing now and the other thing is you know just like Troy Aikman it took him a while to mature and to develop as an outstanding quarterback took a couple of years Brett Favre is just now coming into his own I don't know Terry how long did it take you to develop into uh, a about my 11th year and that was a year before I retired <laughs> <laughs> Listen to him. well the one thing you can always say about Brett Favre is he is one tough-nosed quarterback Toughness definitely characteristic. One note we'd like to pass along to you as well that the uh, New York Jets announced today that General Manager uh, Dick Steinberg has been diagnosed with a treatable form of stomach cancer. That is the good news. Dick Haley, the Director of Player Personnel, will be acting on an interim basis in his absence, and we certainly wish him the best, and our prayers are out there with him and his family. All right, we'll be coming back here to Hollywood as we continue on the NASDAQ Post Game Report, bringing you more highlights from around the National Football League. We'll do that after this. Can you hear it? It's the 16th annual Toyota-thon. Time to celebrate the best all-star lineup of new Toyotas ever. Like the new flagship, Avalon, starting at only $22,758. Or the new Toyota T100 Extra Cab. Big room, big power. Check out the old new Tercel, starting under $10,000. And here comes the redesigned Celica Convertible. So hurry to your Toyota dealer now during the 16th annual Toyota-thon. New year, new cars, great deals. They created a personal computer, and the world has been moving at a different speed ever since. They put them into classrooms and created the first generation of computer literate children. Then they gave computer users the freedom to work anywhere. And now they're ready to take us into the future with the most powerful personal computer Apple has ever made. Where do you find companies that refuse to stop at success? Actually, there's a list of them printed every day. NASDAQ, the stock market for the next hundred years. Looking for a different way to spice up dinner? Take a new look at cheese. Think of cheese as a zesty way to perk up your chicken. Or cheese as a tangy topping for tastier fries. Awesome! Food, I do like First came the Tracy Almond Show, then in living color. Now comes the most outrageous sketch comedy of all. You've got friends at illegal alien makeovers. Join award-winning comedian John Leguizamo. How do I do it? In House of Buggin, cover the Fox Sunday night this January. Catch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Tuesday at 8, 7 central. back here in our Studio 7 as we continue with the uh, highlight portion of our NASDAQ postgame report. The Patriots come out 10-point victors over the Chicago Bears. Marcel looking on. Butler, who missed two field goals on the day. This field goal attempt is blocked by Troy Barnett. Right there, New England is up at this point 6-3. to three. Wanstad arguing with the field judge. No, no, yes, yes, no, no, yes. And now Drew Bledsoe to Leroy Thompson. Three yards, touchdown, 
New England goes on to win this football game and now won seven games in a row. And the Bears are still in the playoffs by virtue of Green Bay's victory and Arizona's loss. New England, of course, clinched the playoff spot with that 10-point victory. In New York at the Meadowlands, it was the Cowboys losing to the Giants by 5, 15-10 to 10 there. Emmitt Smith did not start, did not play for the Cowboys. But he had to walk one on. Troy Aikman, first nine, first nine plays. Look at this. Five times he finds himself on the ground. Eric Hired gets him there. Now Mike Sherrard, the greatest route in all of football, is the crossing route, J.B. 49-yard TD reception from Dave Brown. Vastly improved Dave Brown as the Giants have a 7-3 lead going to win this game. 10-3. Now we see a fumble into the end zone. Recovered. Yes. Keith Hamilton, did he have it? No. They say no. Barry Switzer looking on, can't believe what's happening to him, but this game clearly was outplayed. The Giants just clearly outplayed him. Once again, no option for the Cowboys. And we'll get Jimmy's thoughts later on in this, but Barry Switzer's going to have to find a way to fire up the Cowboys, who lost 15-10 to 10 to the Giants. Giants victorious, but the Giants do not make it to the postseason play. That's because the Packers won handily over the Bucks, 34-19 down in Tampa Bay. Weich looking for his fifth straight victory. Done a good job, Sam Weich, but one thing you can't do, you can't play defense for him. Sterling Sharp up. There's the fade route. One TD reception. Sterling Sharp corner, 22-yard touchdown reception. Two receptions for touchdowns on the day. That was his 17th of the year. Favre also had three touchdown passes. Of course, he did. Sharp had three of them. And there's a great job by Brett. He finds Sterling in the corner. 33 TD passes on the year. Far young Brett Favre. Sterling Sharp has 18 touchdown receptions. League, a, a new club record for Brett Favre, a guy who will not be going to the Pro Bowl. Hey, you got that point out again. <laughs> will, not, you? will not be going to the Pro Bowl. Nine <laughs> catches, 132 yards, and three touchdowns for Sterling Sharp as the Packers come away victorious by 15. All right, down in Atlanta, it was Arizona losing in the last three seconds. Ron Moore could not go over from the one. Packers hold on for the make that the Falcons hold on for the four-point victory. In Cincinnati, my goodness, the Bengals come back from 17 down and win it 33 to 30. Doug Pelfrey's 54-yard field goal did it. That ties a season long in the NFL. In Cleveland, the Browns impressively over the Seahawks. And in Indianapolis, the Colts close out the regular season with a one-point victory over the Bills. Back with more after this. It began with a simple insight that chickens fed on the way to market arrived plump with profits. Then they introduced chicken in parts, which took them into supermarket and fast food chains across America. Today, Tyson Foods is much more than the world's largest poultry company. It is poised to be the main course wherever food is served. Where do you find companies so in touch with what investors hunger for? Actually, there's a list of them printed every day. NASDAQ, the stock market for the next hundred years. I can go from 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds. I have a top track speed of 150 miles per hour. Yet I am very, very quiet. Who am I? Experience the wonder the magic and the adventure of Fern Gully, a Fox Family movie presentation, Christmas Day. Tis the night before Christmas, and now you shall see how it all comes to life round the Christmas tree. The spirit of Christmas, you know how it is when it comes from Nobody Beats the Wiz. A gift from the Wiz changes old to new. Sony's Panasonic's and IBM's too. A whole transformation of sight and sound. TVs and portables, the best stuff around. Camcorders and cameras at prices so low, when you have the Wiz, where else could you go? Let the Wiz make your holidays a pure delight. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Yeah, they all look innocent enough, until they start ganging up on you. Then you'll be glad you invested in the security of Jeep Grand Cherokee with full-time four-wheel drive, 190 horsepower engine, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a driver's airbag. Because when you're outnumbered millions to one, you need all the help you can get. Now get great values on Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your tri-state Jeep and Eagle dealers. We get set to say goodbye. We give the final thoughts to the coach. Well, I think you know, everybody's going to be screaming in Dallas, but really, they have one of the two most talented teams in football. I think that with two weeks to get ready for hosting a game, 
I think he'll be fine. You like that Green Bay quarterback, don't I you? I do. Merry Christmas, everyone. I wanted to get that <laughs> All right, in. he got it in. Hey, folks, Merry Christmas from all of us to all of you. We'll see you next week. Playoff time right here on Fox. You got to love it, J.B. <laughs>